Herr Mützenich, Sie sind ja in der Vergangenheit. Mr. Mützenich, in the past you've been heavily criticized by Ukrainians. You were once described as someone who spreads the Russian narrative. How difficult have your conversations here in Kiev been? Not at all, because the criticisms you mentioned, and I realized that very quickly, were obviously shared by very few people here. I understand the special challenges, but I met people who were very well informed about them, and who are also happy that we are not only in contact with the governments in Europe, but also with the parties and the parliamentary groups. And that's the reason why we've come here. Nevertheless, you've always been very careful, especially when it comes to military support. In the end, it is usually the case that what was rejected at the beginning is delivered. How much damage do you do to yourself by always dragging it out like that? We don't drag things out, we consult with partners. That takes time and, of course, we always have to reassure ourselves about what we can deliver without jeopardizing our own security or that of Europe. These are very important discussions. Those we spoke to also understood that. And when I am accused of wanting to bring in the whole range of international politics, I do not see that as an accusation, but rather as confirmation that it is good. What I've seen here in Kiev is that some of the domestic political discussions that we have in Germany are not conducted here at all. Rather, the entire range of support begins with humanitarian aid, economic support, financial support, but also support with weapons technology is very highly valued here. And some things which various people in Germany talk about are not recognized here at all. This was your first visit here in Kiev since the beginning of the war. What's the main takeaway for you? What requests have been put to you? In particular, that we continue to exchange ideas, that we also understand what Ukraine believes it needs. And it's not just about weapons systems, it's also about internally displaced people, who ultimately are also here in the country. They also need to be reached with humanitarian aid. Financial support is necessary, but we also note that President Zelensky has submitted diplomatic proposals. In other words, there's a very broad bundle of things that have been said here. And of course, I'll take those ideas back to Germany with me now. Was there anything that particularly surprised you? I was surprised by the great gratitude. I find it entirely appropriate because Germany is one of those countries that has got very involved. And in particular, when we've made decisions, we also deliver, sometimes in contrast to other governments, which often misuse this discussion for their domestic political purposes. And I believe that this will be followed very closely and with great interest, and that Germany will then also keep its word. Tomorrow you will attend a meeting of social democratic parties from other Eastern European countries. That meeting will also be about coming to terms with what has perhaps gone wrong in recent years, especially in social democracy in Germany. What do you expect? Well, I believe that these talks in Warsaw, where Lars Klingbeil will represent our party, are not at all backwards looking. Ultimately, the question is, how can we also make a contribution from Europe? How does the basic social democratic framework provide help in precisely this situation that we have in Europe? And no one in German social democracy is in any way in sackcloth and ashes about what we have contributed in Europe over the past few decades. Social democratic decision makers helped to ensure that a Cold War, which was often a hot war outside of Europe, where nuclear weapons could possibly have been used in the world, was peacefully overcome. And that remains and will remain one of the guidelines for action in the future.
Nevertheless, criticism of German policy has been loud. Even if we don't go back that far, maybe just the last 10 years or the last 15 to 20 years, especially from Poland and from the Baltic states, what are you expecting? Well, we are prepared for many things, but in particular, we are prepared for the fact that these actors, and when we talk about Poland, that's not the entire country, so I hope it stays plural with very different opinions, and we will continue to deal with them. And some contributions by, for example, the Polish government to some European discussions but in particular also decisions that are made in Poland, some of these do not belong to my framework of basic values, which are also so important for the European Union. These values make an outstanding contribution to international politics as well, namely safeguarding democracy, respecting the independence of the judiciary and in particular of parliaments. And so we will continue to bring this up again and again in the coming days, weeks and months. Many thanks.